So I've previously talked about my general disinterest in GUI file managers, but I found one that actually caught my attention and I've decided to actually switch to it recently. So this is Space FM, which is a fork of PC Man FM, and there's a very good reason why I use it. And that reason is that almost everything in this program is customizable and you'll see what I mean when we get to it. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's jump right into it. So one thing I should mention is that Space FM, being a fork of PC Man FM, is a GTK3 app. So if you don't like GTK3 apps, then I guess this isn't going to be for you. But for anyone else, let's actually have a look at how it actually works. So before we get to actually running it, let's actually go and install it. So if you're on Arch, you can do this through the AUR, so Space FM. If you're on anything else, I don't know if it's going to be in your standard repos. If it's not, there are install instructions on the GitHub page. But yeah, if, if you're on anything else, go through these. If you're on Arch, then just do it from the AUR. That's just going to be the easiest way to do it. Now, let's actually have a look at how this program looks. Now, I don't normally run it in this mode, but I think when you first install it, it won't have the Breeze theme unless, obviously, you have another GTK app that you've set it for. But I think it'll look something like this. So it'll be set to compact mode. I think maybe one of these other windows will be open, but basically, or one of the panes, but basically it'll look a little something like this. So you probably... If you're anything like me, you probably want to switch it back to something a little more comfortable. So I think that's... How do we do that? Style into icons, I think? Yeah. That's that's a little bit better for me. So I did mention just before these panes. So this is one of the really cool things about Space FM. So it is a multi-pane GUI file manager. So if you don't know what that means, I guess I'll have to show you. So basically, let's open up a second pane. And as we can see, we're in my home directory here and I was moving around in the second pane, so I'm in my downloads directory here. But I could go anywhere in this one and it doesn't actually affect this main pane over here. So if I wanted to say drag this file into my documents, then I can just drag it from this pane on the left to this pane on the right. Now, you can independently also change the styles of these. So this one is in the icon style and this one is in compact, but I can change this one by going in here, go to view, then I could change this from that to, actually it's in detailed, not compact, but let's change it to compact. So that changes that a little bit, but I could also change it to the same as I've got in my main pane. So I could change that over to icons. And as we can see, now we have icons in this one and icons in this one. And they're both completely independent from one another. So I could do whatever I want over here and it won't affect over here. So this is basically like having multiple tabs. But unlike having multiple tabs, you can actually see both of them at the same time. And you're limited to four, I believe. I don't think you can add any more than this. But four is generally going to be enough. If you need more than four, I don't know what you're doing. And if you do need more than four, then just open up another instance of Space FM and you just get another four instantly. And the ones in here are completely independent from the ones in the second window as well. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on talking about multi-pane file managers, but that is really cool that that's there. Now, the thing that really made me want to use this is the fact that Everything is so customizable. The one thing I can't work out to customize is the text in the main window, but it's probably somewhere in the manual. Before we get to the actual customization, I'll talk about the manual for just a moment. There is this really, really long manual. So basically everything that you could possibly want to do in this program has been documented. So go have a look at that for anything that I don't cover, but I'm just going to cover some of the stuff that I think is kind of cool. For example, these bookmarks over here. So let's say I want to add a new bookmark. I can just go into say my, this folder right here, this random folder here. And then I could click over here, go new bookmark. And then it will actually open up a selector and it's actually put me directly into that folder. So obviously I could also just move around. I don't have to use the folder that I'm currently in. So if I wanted to put some other random folder in here, so say like my anime folder, for example, I could then go in here, press okay. And that's now added a new bookmark. Now the icon for that is a bit different from the other ones. So let's modify that. Let's go to properties and we can change the name. So we can put a capital on that if we want. And that then changes that to a capital. We can change the actual key for it. So if we want to bind this to say E, then if we press E, go to some other folder. So let's just go to my to upload folder. If I press E, that then jumps to the anime folder. So you can key bind basically everything in this as well. But you could also change the icon and this is where you can make it look just really dumb if you feel like doing it. You could be like, I want this to be an AC adapter for whatever reason. And there we go. Now it has an AC adapter icon. It's a little difficult to see with the current font size, but 
you can see that it's not a folder icon, that's for sure. Now, for general file manager stuff, it, it does all that as you would expect. So if you want to make a new file, a new folder, you want to open this up in various programs, you can do that. You can um, go back with in here. But the one thing you're going to find really weird about this is you can actually modify what's in this context menu. So how do you modify what's in the context menu, you might ask? This is going to sound weird, but you right click on the context menu and that brings up another context menu. I couldn't work out how to do this at the start, but it makes so much sense that I just didn't even realize. So let's say we wanted to add a, I don't know, a bookmark in here. So we could add a bookmark to my videos folder in here. And now if we right click, now we can see, I must have added the wrong folder there, but now we actually have a bookmark to my anime folder in my context list. And I think... I think you can move this around somehow, but I'm not exactly sure. But if I want to delete it, then I can easily do that by just going remove or I could press delete on it. Now, that should give you an idea of the sort of customization that is available in this program. So another thing you can do is add a new command, for example. So we click add new command and you give it a name. So we'll just call it command remotely spell it even close to correct it wasn't correct anyway doesn't matter and then in here you can just start writing in bash script or write whatever script you want you don't have to do bash if you want to do Perl, you want to do python anything you can interpret it's going to work as long as you have an interpreter for it so that's really cool you don't have some weird language just to modify this you can just write it in your normal shell script and that's how the plugins work so this program also has a plugin system so by default it doesn't actually have support for a trash system. So if we go new, add a new file. So now we've got this new file in here and it automatically opens it up in your editor, which is nice. I didn't realize it did that actually, but we have this new file in here. So if we right click on that and go to delete, then this will actually go to properly delete it. But if you install the trash plugin, so I haven't actually fixed this up properly, but I do have it bound to a key. So if we go up to the plugins menu and you can see I actually have a plugin installed here. So I've got the trash plugin. I can then move that to trash and I can go over to my trash folder and somewhere in here I will have this file down the bottom here. So now you might be wondering, how do I install a plugin? Is it gonna be difficult? It's not difficult at all. It is incredibly easy. So the plugins need to be in tar GZ. Now, a lot of the plugins are going to be really old, so you might struggle to actually get the files. For example, with the trash plugin that I've got, it was a little bit of a pain to make it so I could actually install it. But assuming you actually have the file to install it, all you have to do is go up to install and go to file, click on that, and then you have to go search for the file, obviously. Then the actual plugins are installed to your root account just so they can be shared easily across all of the users. And then once you've done that, you should probably restart the instance of SpaceFM if it doesn't appear. And there you go. Now you have the plugin installed. You could also just do it directly through a URL as well. Once again, you're still going to run into that same problem where a lot of the plugins are really old. So let's just assume you have a plugin installed. Let's assume you managed to get the trash plugin installed. So one of the things you might want to do is actually bind hotkeys to some of these actions. So let's say you want to bind a hotkey to say the move to trash. So you're going to have to click on something first just so it isn't grayed out. We go up to here, then we can just right click on this and then we can modify this. So go to properties and we can give it an icon or we can change the key to press for it. So if we want to change that from that to say K for example, now that's been changed over to K. I'm just going to put it back on delete just so I don't forget to change it. Now, there is just so much stuff in this program to talk about. I don't think I'll be able to get to it even if I was to do like five hours talking about this program. You can change the font of basically everything. So all of these sections have independent fonts. So you can change the font of this section. You can change the font of the bookmarks. You can change the font down here. You can change the action that happens when you middle click down here as well. You can give this bar a highlight. You can give the text a highlight. Honestly, I don't even know where to keep going with this. There's just so much this program can do. And one other thing it can do, which I'm not using it for, but I might try it out, is that it also actually comes with a lightweight desktop manager. I'm not really sure why exactly, but you can use Space FM as a desktop manager. So what a desktop manager is, is basically it'll let you have desktop icons, a desktop menu. 
and you can also set your wallpaper with it. So similar to what you'd get within something like GNOME or if you're coming from Windows, how you'd better have icons on your actual desktop. Whereas on like a tiling window manager, if you don't install a desktop manager, you just can't do that. But yeah, I don't use it for that, but you can do that. So that's actually really cool as well. Should it be in this program, considering the fact that it's supposed to be a file manager? Probably not. Are you probably better off just running a separate lightweight desktop manager? You probably are, but you know what? It is cool that it's here. So if you do have it installed and you do want to use it, I guess that's cool. One last thing I wanted to mention. So a lot of file managers just don't bother to do USB auto mounting. But with this, I've actually got it disabled right now, but let's, let's go disable my other version of doing USB auto mounting just so they're not conflicting. You disky, kill that, okay. So if we go up to devices and we go to settings, then if we look in here, there's a auto mount option. So it's not actually an auto mount. What it is, is it'll actually mount as soon as you open up your instance of Space FM. So let's just auto mount removable. And if I was to plug in, I don't have a separate USB port. Uh, let's unplug my mouse and see if we can do this. Now, I should have planned this before, but I only have three USB ports, so I will just cut back to when this is done. The only reason that was giving me so much trouble is because it's one of those uh, little USB dongle thingies, and I kind of uh, cut my finger a little bit. So anyway, we'll just ignore that. Let's just plug in this USB and see what's going to happen. So plug that in, and what should happen is it opened up on the wrong file manager. Okay, let's try that again. So I've got a second instance of Space FM on my second screen, but let's let's plug that in on this one, and hopefully there we go. Now it's automatically going to bring up that USB. So it brings it up in a separate tab, and also if we look under the devices list, if we close this tab off, then we click on this, it'll automatically bring us back over to that. So that's really cool. It uses I think UDisk two to do it. So make sure you have that installed. If you don't have it installed, obviously it's not going to work, but you probably have it installed from something. I think Caden Live for some reason has it as a dependency. So if you've got Caden Live installed, you've got UDisk 2. If you don't, just install UDisk 2 because it's a really cool program. So if you want to play around with those mounting settings, then just come into the settings menu. And most of this stuff is configurable. So you can change the mount options. You can change the detection options. You can, as I had before, you can just auto mount removable. If you still have an optical drive, you can also auto mount optical drives. You probably don't have an optical drive though, so it probably doesn't matter. And you can also change it so it won't automatically open a tab. And you can unmount as soon as you actually quit out of Space FM. Now, I think I think that's pretty much everything. I've roughly gone over everything I want to talk about. Bookmarks, commands, everything that it does is there's a lot of stuff it does. So I think I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Now, as I said, this isn't everything it can do. There is this ridiculously long manual. Go have a look at this. It will tell you everything that this program does and far more than I can tell you, that's for sure. So go have a look at that if you want to see more about it. But I think that this has given you enough to show you why I really like this program. And hopefully you guys will go and try it out. And hopefully that means that more people will start making plugins for it. And not just that, some people actually update their plugins and make sure the URLs to download the plugins are actually working. But I'll hold out hope for that. It's probably not going to happen though, but we'll see what happens. Anyway, so if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so my Discord and my Telegram and all of that stuff. So go there if you want to get video updates or you want to chat with me. And I've also got my support link. So if you'd like to support the channel, then go donate to my Patreon or any of the other methods that are down below. But obviously, as always, if you don't feel like doing it, then you don't have to. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platform, so my BitTube and my library. So feel free to check those out if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me now, and I'm out.